Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to run you through a derivation for the Swedish method of slices. So an assumption of the Swedish method of slices is that the interslice forces are equal and as a result they cancel each other out. So when we, when we look at a single slice, it is now only necessary to resolve the forces acting on the base of the slice. So here you can see a, a single slice here which makes up part of a slip circle. And the center of the slip circle is denoted by O. And a distance from the center of the slip circle to, to the uh, failure plane is denoted by R, the radius. And the radius R also extends to the center of our slice here. The angle that the center of the slice forms with the center of the slip circle is denoted by this angle here, alpha I. There are also fa uh, forces which are acting on our slice. So a force due to the weight of the slice is denoted by W here. We also have a shear force acting at the base of the slice, a resisting shear force, sorry, denoted by TF. And we also have a normal force denoted by N here. And this slice also has dimensions. So the the width at the top of a slice is denoted by B, the height of a slice is denoted by H, and the arc length at the base of a slice is denoted by L. The distance between the weight force and the center of the slip circle is denoted by X, where X is equal to R sine alpha. Now before we derive the expression for the factor of safety, Let's first look at our failure criterion here. So we have the shear, the failure shear stress being equal to the cohesion plus normal stress multiplied by a tan of the angle of friction. And integrating this expression will give us an expression for the shear force being equal to capital C plus the normal force multiplied by a tan of the angle of friction phi. So, so recall from our previous videos that capital C is equal to little c, the cohesion, multiplied by L. And N is equal to W cosine alpha. So L, in this case for the, the slice, we, we approximate the base of the, the arc. We, sorry, we approximate the arc at the base of a slice as being a straight line. So in this case... L is equal to B over cosine alpha. Also recall that W is equal to gamma multiplied by BH. So if we look at a single slice, the factor of safety F is equal to the resisting moment divided by the disturbing moment. And this is equal to TF multiplied by this lever arm R divided by W multiplied by X, where X is R sine alpha. So W multiplied by R sine alpha. And if I Substitute what TF stands for, so that's CL plus W cosine alpha tan phi multiplied by R divided by W R sine alpha. In this case, the radius in the numerator and denominator both cancel out. So this expression here gives us the factor of safety for a single slice. So for the entire soil element or sliding mass, the factor of safety F is equal to the total resisting moment. Divided by the total disturbing moment.
So that's equal to the sum sigma of C L plus W I cosine alpha I tan phi divided by the sum of W I sine alpha I and the sorry that's L I here. And the i's just represent what these values are for that one particular slice that we're looking at. So to find the factor of safety for the entire soil element, we need to add up these values for, for each individual slice. And if we're carrying out a total stress analysis, these parameters here are then undrained. So cohesion and angle of friction. So to consider the effect of water, so if there's a water table within the soil element, we then use an effective stress analysis. So this means we need to use the effective normal force, which is equal to the total normal force uh, minus the pore water pressure force. So as a result, this modifies our factor of safety expression. So this W cosine alpha here just corresponds to the total normal force. So we need to change that. So F is equal to sigma C dash. So this is drained analysis now. Sorry, effective stress analysis plus WI cosine alpha I minus UI. So this is the pore pressures acting at the base of the individual slice. Tan phi dash divided by sigma wi sine alpha i. So for a particular slope that we have, when using this method, we, through, a, through an iterative procedure, or I guess iterative process, we trial a range of slip circles in various centers as well, until we reach a minimum factor of safety. So we determine a minimum factor of safety by considering a range of failure surfaces. So final notes on the Swedish method of slices. You should use a minimum of five slices. And because this is a very approximate method, the factor of safety may be as much as fifty percent on the low side. And that's it for today's video. Hope this helps guys.